2023 is here and the celebrity news stories are already flowing in. Prince Harry is back to dish some more about leaving the royal life behind, Celine Dion has been snubbed by Rolling Stone, and you may never hear this Christmas song again after its rights are purchased. Welcome to Inform Overload, I'm your host for today Maddie, let's get right into it. Just when you thought we would be getting a break from Harry and Meghan after the release of their documentary, they reveal yet another big interview. This time Harry's flying so Solo and will be appearing on 60 Minutes with Anderson Cooper next Sunday, January 8th on CBS. This interview will be to discuss Harry's upcoming memoir called Spare. From the promotional clip, it seems to me like we are going to hear even more of him, almost revealing something about the royal family, but not really. Like, I'm pretty sure their docuseries was supposed to be this explosive tell-all, never heard before, information-packed thing, and we just heard more of the same. For the people who whine and fear for their privacy, they truly are sharing a lot about themselves. I'm sure that if they just completely took a break from being in the media, everyone would lose interest pretty fast, which is what I thought the whole point of moving was, but I digress. Prince Harry said he has tried to keep his conversations with the British royal family private, but to combat stories in the tabloids, he's been forced to make his concerns public. First of all, Harry hasn't said anything. Maybe, hey, this conversation happened, but overall, he really hasn't given us any details about the family, and that's the whole reason I'm listening, Harry. I want him to drop all the details. Who said what, Harry? I'm gonna need some names. Clips promoting the interview have come out and Harry told Cooper, every single time I've tried to do it privately, there have been briefings and leakings and planting of stories against me and my wife. He also shared, you know the family's motto is never complain, never explain, but it's just a motto. And what a motto it is. I truly hope Harry drops some actual bombshells in this book because I know he has them all locked and loaded. Regardless of how horrible you find him and Megan, you know he has some dirt on that family. There is a lot of complaining and a lot of explaining being done through leaks, Cooper says to Harry. To which Harry explains, they will feed or have a conversation with the correspondent. And that correspondent will literally be spoon fed information and write the story. And at the bottom of it, they will say that they've reached out to Buckingham Palace for comment. But the whole story is Buckingham Palace commenting. Harry then shares, so when we're being told for the last six years, we can't put a statement out to protect you, but you do it for other members of the family. Family, there becomes a point when silence is betrayal. If that's just what we get from him in the promo, maybe the interview will really be Harry's chance to expose the family. They have talked about their lack of support from the family time and time again, especially when it comes to Meghan, but I hope he really gets into it on Sunday. I think people will be excited to see Harry flying solo, giving an interview like this without Meghan. Sunday's interview with 60 Minutes will be Harry's first on US television talking about the book. What do you think? Will Harry finally be dropping some details on his royal family? or will this just be another platform to dance around the details and compare his wife to his mother? Let me know all of your thoughts on Harry and Spare and the 60 Minutes interview in the comments below. The Rolling Stones started a tradition in 2008 of releasing a list of the 100 greatest singers every year. Over a decade since starting said list, it has expanded its recognition, now including 200 artists instead of the original 100 count. In its most recent published list released just before 2022 ended, it presented several musicians from different areas and honored them for their unmatched contribution to the industry. One name that was nowhere to be found on the list but people think should have made it is Celine Dion. In the article, the magazine reminded the readers that it's the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices. The magazine explained, talent is impressive, genius is transcendent. Sure, many of the people here were born with massive pipes, perfect pitch, and boundless range. Others have rougher, stranger, or more delicate instruments. The top 20 singers on the list include Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Sam Cooke, Billie Holiday, Mariah Carey, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Beyonce, Otis Redding, Al Green, Little Richard, John Lennon, Patsy Cline, Freddie Mercury, Bob Dylan, Prince, Elvis, Celia Cruz, Frank Sinatra, and Marvin Gaye. Dion's fans were left shocked as the My Heart Will Go On singer did not even make the list at all. Many expressed their dismay and disbelief on Twitter. Dan at Dana Montana said, I beg of you all, don't go look at the Rolling Stone article. It must have been purposefully crappy to get clicks. Because what? Celine Dion's absent Kelly Clarkson's down at 194, Brandy's at 192, Carrie Underwood's at 190, but Taylor Swift is all the way up at 102, BFFR. I mean, I totally understand, everyone has a different idea of who's a great singer, but I agree. How did Dion not even get a spot? Personally, I don't listen to much Celine Dion, but she's always been up there regarded as one of the best for as long as I can remember. I mean, my heart will go on alone should have gotten her a spot, especially if Taylor Swift did. I'm in no way saying Taylor Swift is bad, but Come on, 
Dion has been extremely iconic for much longer than Swift. Let's also not forget the several achievements throughout Dion's career, including 20 Juno Awards, 12 World Music Awards, 7 Billboard Awards, and 5 Grammys, just to name a few. The singer has also sold 10 million copies worldwide, making her one of the very few female artists to achieve this. Dion herself has not responded to her absence from the list, but it came out days after she shared a video to mark Christmas Day amid her health issues. If you're unaware, she revealed that she has been diagnosed with the rare autoimmune disorder, Stiff Person Syndrome. According to Yale Medicine, the illness causes a person's muscles in the limbs and torso to suffer spasms and rigidity. The spasms can be triggered by several things like loud noises, emotional distress, and other certain stimuli. However, it can also be random. Clearly, the singer has much more important things on her plate to worry about than some list, like her health, but I'm sure it's still a bit insulting for her to not be included. Neurologist Richard Nowak said that people with her syndrome can run the spectrum from mild to severe, and a personalized approach to treating the disease is the best way to ensure an improved outcome. The cause of the rare disease is unknown, and amid her health battles, Dion has said that she wants to get back to the stage soon. Screw being considered one of the top 200 singers by the Rolling Stones, let's just be grateful that Dion is getting the care she needs and hope that she's able to return to the stage. If she's ever feeling down about not being included on the list, I'm sure she can find comfort in the plethora of fans who are outraged for her and simply not accepting the list. What do you think? Is Celine Dion one of the top 200 singers? Do you think she deserves a spot on that list over someone else? Let me know all of your thoughts on the Rolling Stone top 200 singer list below. And finally, on to the Christmas song that may not be returning this Christmas. Christmas songs in general are often met with divided opinions. There are always those few people who can't stand to hear any sort of Christmas song. One couple took hating Christmas music to the next level and even paid to make one song disappear. The song that makes their ears hurt when the holidays roll around is Wham's 1984 song Last Christmas. I'm sure we've all heard this one before, and if you are also not a fan, you'll be happy to know that this couple has raised 50,000 pounds to buy the licensing rights in hope they can scrub it from existence. Hannah Mazzetti spoke with the Southwest News Service, telling them that her contempt for the song began when she was 20, 13 years ago, when she worked at a cafe in Oxford and her boss would play it so much that it became repetitive and tiresome. Mazzetti explained that the owner of the cafe had planned for a super cozy holiday season and had his own CD made with a number of hits on it. She went on to add, he was only in now and then so he did not fully appreciate the agony the rest of the staff felt when last Christmas played for the 111th time of the workday. As someone who's worked somewhere that played the same songs over and over every shift, I totally understand her pain. If you have a song that still haunts you from being played on repeat at work, drop the title below. Mazzetti went on to say that she and her husband Thomas had the idea to buy the song's original rights after a friend let them know such a thing could be achieved. Explaining their journey, Mazzetti said it started last Christmas, no pun intended, when we asked friends how much they'd be willing to pay to never hear the song again. Quite a lot it turned out, and when the song started playing this November, we were reminded. Mazzetti said that someone told us it was theoretically possible to buy the rights of the song and then take it off all streaming platforms. We asked around among our friends and word spread. It's fun because people either love or hate the idea. Maybe next Christmas will be the last Christmas. If you're a fan of the song, you'll be sad to hear that Hannah and Thomas are on their way with their campaign, having raised a little over 51,000 pounds from around 330 contributors. If you are not a fan of the song, you will be sad to hear that they still have a few million to go. The rights to last Christmas are owned by Warner Chapel Music UK and according to the Daily Mail have an estimated price tag in the ballpark of 15 to 20 million pounds. The climb is still steep, but should they reach their goal, Mazzetti said they'll send the master tapes off to a nuclear waste site in Finland where it will rest for at least 2 million years. Mazzetti made sure to stress that her and her husband do not have any hate towards Wham themselves, saying, I'm sorry, but this is the way it has to be. We do not hate Wham, but we hate this song. It's because it's being played 5,000 times per day, but we felt something has to be done to support the people who suffer like us. Mazzetti also shared people's reaction to their campaign, with half being really mad and angry and the other half being really happy. Apparently some people love to hear the song 500 times a day, and those people are Thomas and Hannah's enemies. She said the people said there are even worse songs that should be taken off before this, like Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas, and if we don't like it, we could wear headphones. And that it's strange to want to remove something beautiful for the rest of humanity just because we don't like it. A very interesting cause to be raising money for, but I guess if you can do it, why not give it a shot? I def don't think they are overreacting to the song being overplayed. We've definitely all thought about how nice it would be to never hear a certain song again, and I guess the Mazzettis are the first to take action. 
action. I think they could definitely be raising money for something more important, but if they aren't harming anybody, go nuts. I'm curious to see how far they get on their banning last Christmas journey. What do you think? Are you a part of the half that would be happy to see it go, or are you a part of the half that would totally pay to never hear that song again? Let me hear all of your thoughts on getting rid of last Christmas for good and what song you wish you could make disappear in the comments below. Well, that's all of our news for today. I've been your host, Maddie. Thanks for watching IO and Happy New Year.